Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is August 9th, 2010. I am Darko, and this first article up for this news bulletin is Russian heat wave worse than 1,000 years, killing 700 people a day. And of course, the uh, most of the media, Russian and non-Russian, are attributing this and the Pakistani floods, the Chinese floods, now the floods in a uh, India, on humans. It's all of our faults. So, feel guilty, my fellow slaves. It has nothing to do with El Nino, has nothing to do with the sun, solar flares, nothing. It's all your fault. So it says, a heat wave which has caused a sanitary and agricultural crisis in Russia is the most severe in the country's history, a top meteorolo meteorological official says. The head of weather forecaster, um, what is this, Rose Gid Romay, said that nothing simil uh, similar had been observed in the millennium history of the Russian state, which dates back to the acceptance of Christianity by ancient Russia in the late 10th century. From the moment of the foundation of our country, we can say, in the last period of a thousand years, no similar heat waves have been observed, neither by ourselves nor by our ancestors. It says this is a completely unique phenomenon, and there is no observations in the archive. It says some authorities have claimed the devastating heat wave kills 700 people a day amid media reports of a government cover-up. It goes on, it says the mortality rate in Moscow is recently doubled. And it says the current toll compares with the usual death rate of 360 to 380, blaming conditions caused by a long period of heat and smog. The announcement followed pressure from media outlets who claimed officials ordered morgues and hospitals not to reveal the full extent of the numbers of deaths caused by the hot weather. The move was in order to conceal the government's incompetence. And this is from Commerçant, quoted an unnamed undertaker as saying, this is from the London Guardian. Russian drought could push up food prices. Russia is the world's second largest producer of barley after the EU, and the cereal crop is used by many farmers in animal feed. Uh, there's also another article saying that egg prices could go up as well associated with this. Uh, shoppers could see the cost of meat and poultry in their baskets rise as the price of barley has more than doubled over the past six weeks due to continued fears over the drought affecting Russia and Ukraine. Russia is the world's second largest producer of barley after the EU and the cereal crop is used by many farmers as animal feed. It says the recent price rise could also have possible knock-on effect on the cost of beer as a significant proportion of the remi remainder of barley production goes into brewing trade on both sides of the Atlantic. Barley is the latest commodity to see a dramatic price rise in recent weeks, so beer is going up as well. It says the worst drought for generations in Russia has already caused 50% jump in the price of wheat, the world's most consumed cereal since June. Last, week's, uh, last week, President Vladimir Putin announced that Russia would freeze grain exports. Attention is also being focused on Australia, the world's fourth largest exporter of wheat, where this year's crop may be... Uh, hit by dry weather in West, Western Australia, which accounts for 40% of exports. Prices have also been put under pressure by very wet weather in Canada at planting time, which reduces acreage. So, it's either too much water or not enough water. And this is interesting. It goes in there and says, but some commodity analysts have blamed speculators for pushing up the price of wheat and barley. Russian wheat, for instance, is mainly exported to the Middle East, which has access to stocks from other areas where strong harvests are expected in Europe and the U.S. This next one is from Press TV, and it's titled, Pakistan Floods, Worse Than Tsunami. This is August 9th, 2010. A senior United Nations official had said, the scale of the Pakistani floods worse than the 2004 tsunami in Asia and the Haiti earthquake. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs also said, nearly 14 million people have been affected by the massive floods. The disaster is worse than the tsunami, the 2005 Pakistani earthquake, and the Haiti earthquake, AFP quoted. A uh, spokesman for the UN told AFP. The UN has estimated that Pakistan's floods have left 1,600 people dead. The worst flooding in the history of Pakistan has also affected the lives of 15 million others. Reports uh, say that the Indus River has bursting its banks in southern province of Sindhi. That's weird how they worded that, but it says the floodwaters flowing from the northwest of Pakistan have already destroyed hundreds of villages. And the Pakistani Prime Minister is quoted as saying the government has done everything possible, but is beyond our capacity. We're facing an extremely difficult situation. This says relevant authorities estimate the number of deaths to rise as further flooding is forecast and rescue teams cannot offer assistance. 
This is 165 dead in India flooding from CNN. And this was posted August 9, 2010. The death toll from last week's flooding and subsequent landslides has risen to 165 in the Himalayan, Himalayan town of Leh, India, according to a senior police officer. In confirming the increased death toll, uh, Farooq Ahmad also told CNN that at least 400 people were injured and have been treated or are undergoing treatment in the various hospitals in the town of Leh. Rescue workers continue to search for more than 400 people missing. State-run media reported on Monday. This says the weather is cleared in Leh, and the rescue relief operations are now in full swing, the local government said in a statement Monday. The government's statement said those affected by the disaster are living in tents provided by the state government and Indian Army. And it goes on and says that at least 150 of those killed in the flooding aftermath have been identified, according to the official press trust of India. As the landslides were triggered last week after a massive rainfall took sleeping residents by surprise, snapping power lines, flattening villages, and appending vehicles. Lays about 310 miles from uh, Srinagar, and about 6,000 soldiers were deployed in the relief efforts. Indian Army Lieutenant Colonel J.S. Barr, or Brar said, sorry, helicopters have also been called in as damaged roads make it difficult to reach affected areas, much like in Pakistan. 1,100 missing in China as Asian flood misery rises. China, China searches for 1,100 missing as floods spread despair in Asia. 13.8 million affected in Pakistan. And this one is from abcnews.com, posted August 9, 2010. Rescuers lifted muddy bodies into trucks and aid convoys choked the road into a remote Chinese town where hundreds died and more than 1,100 were missing Monday from landslides caused by heavy rain that have flooded swaths of Asia and spread misery to millions. In Pakistan, the UN said the government's estimate of 13.8 million people affected by the country's worst ever floods exceeded the combined total of three recent mega-disasters, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, the 2005 Kashmir earthquake, and the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Since more rain is expected in the region over the next three days, the China Meteorological Administration said on Monday evening clouds were building ominously over the mountains where the mud started flowing. We were dumbfounded by the enormity of the flood situation when we got to the scene, said Chen Zhangfeng, a uh, disinfection specialist whose army battalion was the first on the scene Sunday. I wonder if they have anybody from their weather modification office on here saying, you know, hey, we're, uh, we're up there cloud seeding, trying to help. Or is it because of what they're doing that's causing it, or is it El Nino, like I said. I don't know. This is Wheat Crisis Threatens Inflationary Time Bomb Food Riots. This is from PrisonPlanet.com, posted today. It says, Russia's ban on wheat exports followed widespread fires in the country, sent food prices skyrocketing by 19% in just a single week as fears grow that global viol um, volatility in foodstuffs and commodities could lead to a worldwide inflationary time bomb accompanied by widespread food riots. Lenin once called the grain the currency of currencies, underscoring its importance of how it affects everything from staple foods such as bread to animal feed. Food shortages as a result of freak weather conditions in other areas of the globe are also contributing to spiraling prices. Droughts in the Ukraine and Kazakhstan, two of the world's great bread baskets, are also impacting prices. Floods in Canada have further reduced wheat supply and driven up food costs. Un unseasonal frost in Florida have hit orange juice harvests. Devastating floods in Pakistan have wiped away livestock and farms with thousands of square miles of agricultural land destroyed, causing prices of staple foods to soar. Except for excess rain in Brazil and Colombia have inflated coffee prices. Rising grain feedstock prices have led to a general spike in meat prices globally. This is from Newsvine.com, titled, Indian Coast Guard Tries to Contain Oil Slick. Indian Coast Guard vessels and helicopters worked Monday to contain oil spilling from a stricken container ship that collided with another vessel in the Arabian Sea, India's defense ministry said. Maybe it was like uh, what happened with Japan. They were attacked by Al-Qaeda. Hmm? Or maybe it was the big bad Somali pirates. Oh, look at this. Helicopters sprayed chemicals onto the oil spill to prevent it from spreading. You see that, guys? The amount of oil leaked was unclear. That's because they're spraying all these chemicals again. This is like a new protocol. Out of sight, out of mind. BP plans more drip. U.S. report on BP spill censored. U.S. dollar now ripe for catastrophic devaluation. Wall Street bill sweeps away stray remnant of 1933 Glass-Steagall Act. And state-run banks are becoming a new trend. Thank you and take care.